Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back. You guys might have forgotten about this piece right here. Uh, so we already started the assembly of this motor and things just kind of got halted because there were certain parts that we needed to get made. So unfortunately we didn't really do this in like a linear path. But if you haven't, definitely go back and check out the bottom end assembly. Those are pretty good videos. Now for this video, we still don't have all the pieces. They should be here this week though. So I think it's a good time to get started. I wanna do the clutch side in this video. And then I think I'm gonna save the stator side and top end for another video, cause it's just too much for one video. So I've got most of my parts laid out here. You can see I have a bunch of new parts and we also have our quick change clutch cover. Had this thing powder coated by Bonehead Performance. It came out amazing. And we're gonna be using this custom NPM cover. Now, believe it or not, we're actually having a second one of these covers made. This was the prototype, but it still fits perfectly fine and it's gonna look trick. And we're actually gonna be giving this thing away. So definitely stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll have some details about that. All right, guys, so let's jump into it, and we're going to get started with building a water pump on this cover. All right, guys, so here is our water pump assembly and our clutch cover. Got a lot of goodies here. If you guys remember, got this custom NPM water pump cover. That's going to look amazing on there. We've also got this custom quick change clutch cover. And like I said, this is a prototype, and we are going to be doing a giveaway with this. But we're still waiting for the finished product to come back from NPM. So in the meantime, we're going to put this one on the motor today. And then all of this stuff here is for our impeller and everything. These are all new Honda OEM parts with the exception of the impeller itself and the shaft, uh, this nut here and this bolt, everything else is new. And of course you have our stainless steel bolts for the water pump cover. Those are compliments of DBC racing. And then we have our gaskets over here. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Now I've never built one of these before. So this is gonna be a new experience for both of us. First thing I wanna do is replace this seal in the back here. There's actually two pieces in here. There are these two right here. And uh, I think you just take a screwdriver and pry that piece of plastic out. And then there's a piece of rubber behind that that should pry out pretty easily as well. Oh yeah, it comes right out. I'm gonna clean this out with some steel wool and then blow this off with air because I don't want any fine particles in our water pump assembly. All right, that should be good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna make sure there's no obstructions or anything in there. I didn't feel any of this stuff being raised up. So our seal should sit in there nice and flat. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna push in is this little black cup seal. I'm gonna put, oh geez, just a uh, dab of dielectric on here. I like to put this on the outside of my seals and keep everything lubricated. And then we'll push this in place. And then there's this plastic ring that gets pushed in here. All right, now we're gonna put this mechanical seal in first. You can see there's a spring in it. It actually has play. So this will go right in this side, which is the outside of the clutch cover, because we're gonna be putting a seal on the other side also. Now in the manual, it tells you to use a special uh, seal presser pressing tool, but I uh, talked to Blake at DBC Racing and he said you can get away with using a one inch 12 point socket. And you can see it fits on there perfectly. We should have no problem tapping this into place. All right, we got it in there nice and flush. Probably would have gone in a little easier if I had heated up the case and thrown that seal in the freezer, but it still can be hammered in. All right, now we're gonna flip this over and there's a seal that goes in this side. Now I believe the seal goes this way as opposed to this way. It doesn't specify in the manual. So we're gonna put it in this way because the, eel, the oil would be on the inside. I'm putting a couple pieces of wood under here because I want this to sit flat. This area is raised on this side. You don't want to hit this if it's not even. And I'm going to be using a 5 8 inch socket to tap this in place. Now we're going to tap our new water pump bearing in. And uh, you could put this in the freezer, make it contract a little bit and I'm gonna be using a 19 millimeter socket to tap it in place. Oh, I guess I don't even need to <laughs> use a socket for this. All right, now the shaft comes through the back. Like so. And then when we come around this side, we have a small washer, the impeller, a new crush washer 
and our cap nut. We'll tighten this down once we put the cover on because it'll be holding on the other side. All right guys, so we're gonna get into doing the bottom end here. First thing we're gonna do are our primary gears and our counterbalance gears. So the counterbalancer is right here. We already installed that in a previous video. So this is going to control that. So the first thing that we wanna do is put our crankshaft collar in. See, I got it right here. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Frank Anthony, one of my subscribers. He was watching my bottom end videos. He told me that he had a couple of these parts extra. These are machined and hardened by Gil Durbin. You guys in the 250R community might be familiar with him, but he sent me these parts just because. So that was really nice of him. I believe these parts are discontinued, so they can be difficult to get. Before I put it in there, I'm going to put a little bit of Flex Drive 30 on it. This is the transmission oil we're going to be running. So you really don't want to put this stuff together dry. It doesn't really need to be much, but I just don't want it to be completely dry for that first startup. And this is gonna go in this way. So now we're gonna put on our counterbalancer gear. So this clearly has out on the outside. So that uh, portion is gonna face out. And there's two dimples on here. See, so there's one right here and one right here. So this one needs to be aligned with the little slash on the crankshaft. So I think on the OEM crank, there's a, there's a dimple here. This is a hot rods crank though. So you can see there's a little slash mark. So you wanna make sure that that is aligned with the inner dimple. And then there's a mark on your uh, counterbalance as well. And you wanna make sure that that is lined up with this outer dimple. There we go. You gotta make sure that's right. Otherwise things aren't gonna work correctly and these things are gonna bind up. So you can move it by hand just to make sure everything's moving smooth. All right, now I'll put the primary drive gear on. I believe this can go either way. And then there's a bolt and washer that goes on top. This also has an out portion, pretty easy. And I'm gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on here. Now we're gonna tighten this bolt down to 35 foot pounds. So this is a spinning assembly. So the way that we hold that is I'm basically gonna use, it's called the penny technique, where a lot of guys take a penny and jam it in the gears. And because it's soft copper, it won't damage the gears, but it will prevent the gears from turning. I do essentially the same thing. This is a little aluminum nail, so it's soft and it won't damage the gears. All right, now we can pull this nail out. No damage at all. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the shifting components. So the first thing we're gonna do is our shift drum center. You can see in the back, there is a little spot right here. That's for this dowel pin to line up with in the shift drum. And keep in mind guys, this is not going in dry. There is a little bit of oil on there. So this just pushes into place. And there's a center bolt that goes in there. Now we're gonna put the stopper arm on. It's kind of like a shift detent on the Yamaha Banshee. So this is gonna go in place. There is a washer on the back right here. That goes on there. And then of course we have the spring. It's gonna go on like so. And you can see this little groove that the spring fits into. This gets tightened down to 10 foot pounds and 17 foot pounds. All right, now this is the ratcheting mechanism for the shift drum. This is called the, sh the shift pawl, and then there's a little spring-loaded pin in the back. I'll show you this one. You can see it's a little spring-loaded pin. And then the pawl goes into place and you can see the action. So it's gonna go with this portion facing outward and this fits into your shift drum. Then you have the guide plate goes on top. Now we're gonna put these three bolts in and most of these bolts, unless I am putting Loctite on them, most of these are just getting a tiny bit of anti-seize. 
Uh, it's a smart idea to do that once you've had your, your cases vapor blasted. I'm going to tighten these down to 10 foot pounds. All right, now we're going to install our shift shaft. So I've already cleaned this one off and polished it pretty good so that it has a nice smooth action. And there is a thrust washer that goes on the bottom. You don't want to forget that. And I've already put a small amount of transmission fluid on here. You don't want to put this in dry. And uh, you want to note this pin right here is going to go in between the two arms of this spring. And then this collar right here is going to go in this little window right here. All right, now I'm going to put the kicker assembly together. Here is the kicker shaft, and then there's a gear on here. A lot of times if your Kickstarter is skipping when you're kicking it over, it's because this is worn out. So this does go on in a certain orientation. There's a thrust washer and a C-clip on top here. Now, if you look closely, there's a punch mark right here, and there's a punch mark right here. So you just want to make sure that those are lined up. Then you have a spring that goes on, this little cupped washer. And then the return spring is going to go on. You can see there's a little hole where that post goes in. Before I put this together, there is a small spacer that goes in here as well. You can see there's a small spot that compensates for that little spring post so that this can fit all the way in there. Now this spring is going to catch right here on the case. And then this stopper presses up against here. So you're going to have to hook your spring and turn your shaft clockwise. If you can't do it by hand, you can throw the kicker on. And actually, I'm going to do that because this thing is oily. Get that where it needs to be and then you can press forward and it's on there then we have our kicker gear guide plate it's got to be on there so the thing doesn't freaking fly off and these will get tightened down 10 foot pounds as well and now we're going to put on the kickstart pinion gear you can see the teeth on the inside here they're going to face towards these teeth right here that's how it grips We have a collar that goes on. All right, now we're gonna start getting our clutch together. So we have our outer guide. This is another one of those pieces that was machined by Gil Durbin. Thank you, Frank, for this. And then we have two bearings that are gonna slide on top of that. And then our clutch idler gear goes on. Now we're gonna put our Henson clutch basket on. If you guys wanna see how to install this primary drive gear and whatnot, definitely check out my video where I do that. I actually already installed the clutch pack and everything. I'm gonna see if I can just fit it in there without actually building the whole clutch. All right, now this gear is being really stubborn. It's fit in there. I checked to make sure everything is clean I think this just might be because this is a brand new basket and it's a super tight fitment. So I fit it in halfway by hand. I'm just gonna tap that with a mallet and we'll see if that pops in place. And then we'll put the whole assembly on as one. Well, there ain't no doubt that's a snug fit now. So we'll slide this in place. And there's a thrust washer that goes in place. And then our inner clutch hub and clutch plates. Like I said, I already built this. I'm going to see if I can manage to keep this together and just slide it in place. If not, I'll pull it apart and we can do it again. But like I said, if you want to see the video where I actually uh, prep this clutch and pre-soak the plates and whatnot, I do have a video on that.
Damn. Now we've got a thrust washer that goes on. A lock washer. Put a little blue Loctite on here. Then spin our nut in place. Now this gets torqued down to 47 foot pounds. If you have a clutch holder, you can hold your clutch assembly. I'm just going to buzz it on with the impact. Now I gotta bend one of these tabs over. Now we're gonna put our clutch pusher assembly together. I wanna put the clutch arm in first. So this has a return spring and a washer on it. All right, now we'll put the clutch pusher in. We have our push rod right here. Now I didn't see in the manual anything specified which direction this goes. If you look at the one end, this has a slot in it. Not sure if this is an aftermarket one. It looks like in the pictures in the manual, there just is no slot. So I'm gonna put it in with the slot facing inward. Now I have a setup for an, the 89 style. If you've got, I believe 86 through 88, there's a different style, but this is the upgrade. It's supposed to be a better setup. So we'll put that in there. And then our pusher with our pancake bearing on there. And you might have to move your clutch arm. There we go, just so that you can slide that in place. And then there's a thrust washer that goes on top of here. Now I'm doing the Niels clutch mod, which is a, a certain clutch setup. Um, now from what I understand, they recommend running two washers up here. So I have the OEM washer and a second washer that isn't quite as thick as the OEM one, but it'll thicken it up just a little bit. And that's supposed to help with the clutch adjustment. And if I need to, I have the quick change cover. I can always take that, take that back out. But that's why I'm putting two thrust washers on the front as opposed to one. Now we'll put our pressure plate in place. Make sure that sits nice and flush. All right, now we will put our springs and bolts in place. Now you'll notice I'm putting an extra washer under here these are actually 400EX drain bolt washers. This is another part of the Niels clutch mod, so that may not apply if you're just doing a regular clutch setup. We'll bring these in with the impact. You gotta be really gentle with these. I wanna center up this washer in here too. You gotta be really careful if you do use an impact to bring these all the way in, because these are really easy to break. And you'll want to make sure these washers are definitely in the center. When you, when you bring these down, they will center up. But if they're off center, you know, they won't slide on properly. So just make sure that they're nice and centered. Now using the same method as before to keep our clutch from spinning, I'm going to use that little aluminum nail right there. Now there's no torque specs in the manual, but I'm going to tighten these down to seven foot pounds. It's a good idea to go in a crisscross pattern when you do this and to check the tightness multiple times. And of course, don't forget to remove your nail because if you didn't take that out and you tried starting your motor, that would really fuck shit up. All right, we're getting ready to put our cover on. Our surfaces are pretty clean as it is, but just as an extra measure, I have a little bit of lacquer thinner on this paper towel. And I'm just making sure that these are nice clean surfaces. The last thing we want or any leaks when we get this thing together, that would really suck. And then we have two dowel pins, and it's a good idea to put a little bit of anti-seize on these so that you're not hating yourself if you have to take this thing apart or for the next guy. All right, now we got a brand new Honda gasket. And this is not necessary, but I like to put just a tiny bit of gasket tack on here. That's just gonna ensure no leaks. Uh, but like I said, it's not actually necessary. It's not in the manual either. This is the stuff right here. And this is gas resistant. So we did use this on the crank as well. So it's cool for two strokes. As long as you put a thin enough coat on and you put it on after it gets a little bit tacky, it's usually really easy to get it off the cases when it comes time to split them again. Now we can put our gasket in place and it should 
be held in place by the dowels. All right, now we can put our cover in place. Same thing, I wiped down the inside of this with lacquer thinner, and I did put some grease on the inside of our seal here for our kicker. And you're going to have to make sure that it's oriented correctly so that it fits into place all the way because it has a little fork in the back that fits into a groove. And we'll get our stainless steel hardware in. I'm gonna torque all these down to seven foot pounds. And you wanna go in a crisscross pattern. Just double check everything when you're done. All right, now I'm gonna tighten down the water pump bolt. This goes down to nine foot pounds. You'll see if we try to just tighten this, the whole assembly moves. So to keep that from spinning, I'm gonna hold the crank in place. I just have a pipe that I'm putting in here and that will rest against the studs. We're barely torquing this thing. It's only going to nine foot pounds, so it shouldn't damage anything. All right, now I'll put the water pump cover on. Same thing with the other dowels. Just put a tiny bit of anti-seize on them. And we're going to be using two gaskets for this. I'm not using the gasket maker on this stuff. I'm just going to put the gaskets on plain because this thing, when I pulled it apart, everything was stuck together. So we have that gasket, then we have a metal gasket, and then another paper gasket goes on top, like so. Then we're going to put this freaking trick ass NPM cover on. Oh, yeah. This is going to look sweet. Put our bolts in place here. Same thing, we're gonna tighten these down to seven foot pounds. And now for the most trick piece of all, there is a new O-ring on there. We'll put on our quick change cover. guys it looks awesome a couple things i forgot one <laughs> i completely forgot to get a billet oil cap so i know that you guys will not accept having that oem one on there the other thing i forgot was the inspection window we have a bolt that goes in there and i also forgot the one for the water pump but that's really easy stuff basically a bolt just threads right in there but man this thing looks really really trick it's kind of conflicting like I said, we're not going to be using this cover. Um, it's basically the same thing, but it's going to be this Cerakoted color. And there will be accents that are polished or uh, billet anyways. I'm sure when that's on there, that's going to look badass too. It just looks so good the way that it is. All right, guys. So it's coming along really nicely. We're going to do the stator side and the cylinder in the next video. I want to do those together so that we can make sure that we time everything correctly. The head should be here uh, maybe even tomorrow. I think it's in the mail right now. So we'll be finishing this motor up really soon. So hopefully next week I'll have a video of actually putting the motor in the frame. I can't wait to see what this thing looks like with the exhaust on it and stuff. Dude, it's gonna look so badass. It's so cool to see all this stuff come together, you know, with the stainless steel bolts and the trick accents from NPM and the powder coating from Bonehead Performance. I mean, everything on this motor is just coming together. I think it looks really solid. And like I said earlier in the video, guys, we are gonna be doing a giveaway with this clutch cover. So that's a totally custom clutch cover. It has the M309R Patriot on it. A really nice piece of billet. So at the end of this project, I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna to be to enter to win that. Still working the details out with NPM, but that will be a giveaway. So one of you guys will end up with this cover.
All right, guys, so you're gonna have to hang tight until I do the stator side and the cylinder head. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. That helps me out a lot. And if you guys are doing this, just remember to take your time because when you're watching this video, it seems like everything is just going together really quickly and it's a super easy job. It's really not as easy as uh, the video can make it seem. I'm constantly taking breaks, referring to the manual, double checking my work and just making sure that everything is right so that I can relay the correct information to you guys. So definitely take your time. As long as you take your time, you know, don't force anything. And if you have a service manual and plus there's tons of uh, information online, you should be good to go. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Peace out.